Hello everybody, Crit Crab here with another story, this one about a raging that guy with a main character complex, and how he threatens suicide after the players wouldn't deal with his manipulation. But just before we get into that, I want to thank today's sponsors, Dungeon Fog. Introducing Dungeon Fog. In Dungeon Fog, you can draw rooms with intuitive tools, connect them with doors and passages, and decorate your map with props from a library of over 4,000 assets. Heavy on immersion? Then you can light it up with custom light sources and dynamic shadows to create atmospheric scenery for a more immersive experience for you and your players. Short on time, Dungeon Fog has you covered. Help yourself to their massive library of user-generated maps that you can claim and adjust as needed. With that said, the fine folks over at Dungeon Fog offer any and all crabs a whopping 10% off of your annual subscription. Just use code CRITCRAB at checkout. So after this video, crab walk on over to the link in the description. I'll see you there. That aside, roll post. This was a few years ago when I was still in college. Due to the rise of D&D's popularity and a lot of my friends enjoying the Adventure Zone podcast, we decided to form a D&D group together, consisting of my immediate friend group of six people, the DM who's hosting long distance over Skype, and another more experienced player, let's call him Jay. Well, Jay at first was a very amiable guy. I got to know him through my other friends in the group and we got along very well at first. He was open-minded and sweet and had a chronic disease that left him in pain from time to time. We all tried to give him accommodations, especially since he tended to get rather self-deprecating. Nevertheless, when the campaign started, we all thought to invite him to join. We should have seen the first flag raise when he entered our level 1 party at level 5 with multi-class. However, at the time all of us had never played before and most of us were shy, so we just went with the flow. Apparently, during character building, Jay reached out to the DM to give him a rundown of his character's backstory, the tragic last survivor of a fireball genocide who could shapeshift into a human. I swear to this day I could not remember what his class was, only that he was very overpowered but also pacifistic to the point that it actively harmed the game. The DM was charmed by his story and allowed that to happen, even going so far as to write him in to directly relating to the main storyline and that the BBEG was actively trying to kill him. Pause post. First things first, making one player five levels more powerful than the rest is a recipe for an unbalanced disaster. That and his pacifism and his main character thing he has going on are three huge red flags. That and the DM seems to be unknowingly allowing this to happen. Only time will tell, but this is what snowballing your problems down a hill looks like. Roll post. The campaign started out just fine. Jay was an incredible method actor and impressed all of us with his flowing speeches about compassion and pacifism, to the point that my PC, the human fighter with a background in mercenary work, swore to protect Jay because he impressed him. As time went on, however, the speeches started to drag. Whenever we encountered an enemy and rolled for initiative, we could barely get into the fight before Jay's fireball jumped into the fray to deliver an hours-long, passionate speech about uniting together against a greater evil, etc, etc. D&D became less of something fun and more of something to emotionally suffer with. Here's the thing. All of us were college students with very, very little time every week to spare for the game sessions and we all wanted to have a fun, exciting adventure. What the DM and Jay did was make all of us sit for 4-5 to five hours with over half of the time dedicated to Jay's fireball talking to other NPCs. The passion and charisma Jay displayed at first became grating in each passing session, where we were basically forced to sit in silence and listen to the two of them talk to each other. It was made more infuriating later on to learn that Jay was metagaming with the DM, using his experience with D&D in the past to gain the upper hand while us noobs couldn't do much except get strung along. Pause post. This is a recurring theme among some of these groups. There are one or two players that have all of the information and planning behind the game, and want a sort of audience for their actual game. 
they will insist that the other players have agency or that their choices matter, when really the main character is the only one who can have any sort of impact on the game, if that. The rest of the table is reduced to being side characters or an audience, and if they ever attempt to be anything more than that, they will be shot down or sidelined harder. It's deceptive, it's not in the spirit of the game, and it's certainly not something you want to do or have done to you or your group. Roll post. My friends, being rather introverted and shy, couldn't directly confront him, but they did reach out to the DM to ask them to give everyone equal time to perform and play. I, on the other hand, was the confrontational type, but I tried to keep my calm and move the party along. It all came to a head during one of the mini-boss fights against a tree monster. I couldn't recall the name of the enemy's race since by that point Jay had once again paused the fight in order to use his ridiculously high charisma rolls to convince the monster into being a friend. The details in between are murky, but the session dissolved when Jay's Firebolg declared that the BBEG's goal was to make him the last Firebolg, suffer with her wrath for how dare he escaped her divine judgment. This infuriated me since he insinuated that all of the hardship that our party went through was created because of his tragic backstory. I couldn't help it. I made a joke out of character that maybe it would make things easier for our party to just have the Firebolg killed since it would solve a lot of our problems. Jay didn't think it was out of character. He furiously screamed at me, saying my fighter should have known better, that what he was doing all this time was to protect us, etc., etc. The surrounding members of our group were shocked at the sudden raise of voice. Now, I was going through some issues myself at the time, mostly about my temper and my personal trauma in relations to being yelled at. Hearing a man yell at me made me fearful and defensive, and I yelled back, explaining to Jay that the comment was made out of character and it wasn't my character speaking. Nevertheless, Jay was infuriated and wouldn't listen. I called him out on this behavior and told him that I was very close to decking him across the room. Jay instead turned off the Skype call, effectively disconnecting the DM from the group, closed his laptop, and declared that he would go kill himself. Ah, the suicide threat. The manipulator's last stand against reasonable people holding them accountable. Or in this case, first stand? The fact that he's so quickly pivoted to suicide threats tells me that he's been feeling pressure from the group for some time now. Perhaps he and the DM have been monitoring the group's reaction to being sidelined, and seeing them bored, plus the knowledge that the players know Jay and the DM are in cahoots, compounded the pressure. Jay probably saw something like this coming and jumped on the out-of-character joke as he thought it would be the best opportunity to claim the moral high ground. When that didn't work, he only had the suicide card left. Or maybe I'm overthinking all of this. But the truth is that people who threaten suicide are the worst manipulators. They would put the people who care about them the most in an emotional wreck before acknowledging any of their mistakes. If they are ever genuinely in the wrong, they can simply claim suicide and get absolved of any wrongdoing with an extra layer of sympathy. Of course, the more the victim cares about the manipulator, the better it works. Which is why this manipulation tactic is especially evil. Anyways, this rant's gone on long enough. Roll post. With a threat like that, it shook all of us to the core. My group was a bunch of young adults with our own issues, and we already knew of Jay's tendency to self-deprecate. It was worrying to us that he would turn to suicide threats so quickly because that was something that should not be joked about. My friends quickly defused the situation and got him to sit down, where he gave all of us a group lecture. We all tried our best to reconcile. I got my fair share of scolding, and Jay was told that him using suicide threats on us was guilt-tripping and definitely not the right reaction to being called out. Pause the post really quick just to say that this is the right reaction. De-escalate, reconciliate, but make it absolutely clear that those threats are not acceptable ever, and that he cannot do that again. This was a lot nicer than myself or many other people would have handled a manipulative POS, but that's besides the point. 10 out of 10 handling by the group, roll post. 
Nonetheless, after that fateful session, Jay never returned to the group. We kept playing for a bit more until exams turned around and put the story on hiatus for good. I had a lot of fun with them despite everything, even scoring myself a slow burn romance between my fighter and a rock golem. Long story. <laughs> I later found out from my friends that Jay was spreading rumors about me and another player in the group, saying that we were violent towards him and me, especially due to my aggressiveness, should not be tolerated. He was also trying to tell us that we hated each other and talked maliciously behind our backs to tear our friend group apart. This apparently was not the first friend group he had done this to. This man's got a track record of joining friend groups and breaking them apart from the inside. He used his disability as a weapon to guilt trip people, including threats of self-harm and suicide. Unfortunately for him, we were a tight-knit group and had no space for his bullshit. One of my friends later on revealed that he had said many more despicable things against each individual in the group. Now to the point that she swore never to reveal them, joking that I might fly into blind rage and pummel the guy. I wouldn't have done that of course, but still to this day I wondered why Jay had to resort to such underhanded actions to make friends and hurt other people. TLDR, more experienced D&D player used a combination of guilt tripping and metagaming to make the game revolve around himself, and the DM just let it happen. When confronted, he threw a fit, tried to guilt trip the party with the suicide card, and left when we didn't take the bullshit. End post. Ah, where to begin? First and least consequentially, the players clearly did not fully agree with the tone of the campaign. They wanted Lord of the Rings, he wanted Undertale. A Session Zero would clear this up, but in most cases with these horror stories, communication and boundaries are not established in a Session Zero, so we go without. But I have something more serious to say to younger people or people who might be more empathetic or otherwise vulnerable to manipulation. While it may not feel like it, you have no responsibility for anyone threatening suicide or self-harm. And even if you bend over backwards and provide for them whatever it is they wanted, it doesn't stop there. It won't suddenly make them not suicidal, it will embolden them to continue this behavior and mark you as a profitable victim to be exploited. You may care about them, but if they behave like this, they do not care about you. You can be nice about it, you can be stern about it, but most importantly, don't be a sucker. This story and its contents have rightfully earned its place in lesser horror. This is a genuine horror story through and through, but due to smart handling by competent people, it wasn't as bad as it could have been. The point is, Jay, and anyone else who acts like him, is a parasite. I don't know how some people get their kicks by being manipulative shreds of garbage, but as long as they're here infesting our D&D &D games, I'll be here to report on it. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more stories just like this one. Till next time.